Okay, so we're going to be reading from 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 13. This is Paul. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and an injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Now, we all know Paul, his amazing story on the road to Damascus, what he was before Christ, all those things that he was doing in sin ignorantly because of his unbelief. And also the transformation that happened once he had that encounter with Christ, that from death to life testimony. Beautiful, beautiful. Paul says a few key things here in this scripture. He says, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So what does that let you know? He was ignorantly in his sin. There was mercy for him because of his ignorance, his ignorance to what he was doing, being a murderer, a blasphemer, all these things that he was doing outside of Christ, which he thought in his mind, he was doing the right thing. And the Bible also tells us what a man thinks is right in, in his own way leads to destruction. Before we even get to the next scripture, God will cover you and God will still have mercy on you when you're in your sin and you're ignorant to him and who he is and what he can do and will do for your life. You will be covered by his mercy when you're ignorant. So a lot of us, when we were in the world, we had mercy covering us. God's mercy was covering us while we were in our sin. The Bible also says that the Lord is long suffering. Some of us were in sin 10, 12, 13, 14 years. It took us a while. I know for me, I started probably 16, 15 years old and I didn't get right till almost 30. So it took time. God is long suffering. Meaning he will he will tarry with you. He will completely cover you with his mercy and grace when you're in the world and you're in sin and you're ignorant to his devices. You're ignorant to the things that he can do for you. You're ignorant to all of those things because you don't know truth yet. So he will tarry with you. His spirit will tarry over you and cover you because he already knows the plans that he has for your life. Because the Lord is quick to fulfill his promises. Just like if you have a child, you're going to give them chance after chance before you set down the rules like, okay, this isn't what we're doing anymore. So the Lord is long suffering with us while we're out in the world and we're in our sin. So this is the same thing that Paul was talking about. He obtained this because he was ignorant and unbelief because when you believe and you step into, okay, I'm a child of God, there's no, there's no more grace and mercy. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, when you are truly born again, you get convicted. So with the Lord being long suffering, he awaits you to come into truth. He's awaiting. Come on, sisters and brothers. He's waiting for you to come into truth when you're in the world. Now, it is ultimately up to us as people because he gives us free will whether you're going to choose him or not because god desires all men to be saved does that mean all men will choose him absolutely not because people think that they're free when they're in the world they think that they're free because they can drink they can cuss they can smoke they can you know fornicate whatever the case may be but in actuality you're in bondage because now you have become a slave to sin but in christ jesus we are free we are truly free. That is the real definition of freedom being in Christ because we are no longer bound to the things of the world. But when you look at it from a carnal perspective, you're like, oh, well, you don't do X, Y, and Z. And this is what makes me happy. But internally, you're damaged and you're dying. So Hebrews 10, 26 says, for if we sin willfully, what does willfully mean? With the intentions of, with a stubbornness and determination to do as one wants, regardless of the consequences. If we willfully sin, after that, we have received the knowledge of truth. After we have received the knowledge of truth, there remaineth no more sacrifices for sins. 
And I don't think that people really understand what this means. Once you come into truth and you come into, you know, Christ and the Lord gives you conviction and tells you, hey, X, Y, Z is a sin. And you continuously do it. You willfully sin, meaning I'm still going to do this regardless of the consequences, or I'm still going to do this regardless because I know that God's grace and mercy still covers me. Hebrews 10, 26 says otherwise. You cannot willfully practice sin. You cannot continue to sin and willfully sin. And if you are doing that, that's sign number one. Either you don't have the Holy Spirit or there's a stronghold that you need to get casted out of you. There's a demon that is causing you to keep tripping up and going back into sin. Because once we willfully, continuously practice sin... There's no sacrifice for that sin because you did it with the intentions on I'm going to do what I want to do. You did it with the intentions of I don't care the consequences. You did it with the intentions of, you know, I'm just going to do what makes me happy in this day, in this moment and whatever. And God's going to cover me because he's so gracious and so merciful. That's a lie from the pits of hell. That is a lie from Satan. Because why? Because sin is appeasing to the flesh. Satan wants to manipulate the flesh to make you you fall into sin. So a lot of people like to say, well, what is sin? Sin is all unrighteousness. Whoever is born of God sinneth not. What does that mean? Someone who is reborn is not willfully sinning. If you are reborn with the spirit of God dwelling within your being, you are not practicing or willfully practicing sin. Why? Because the spirit of God that's dwelling within you is going to convict you. It's going to say, put that cigarette down. It's going to say, you shouldn't be fornicating with that man. It's going to say that outfit is way too promiscuous for you. You are going to be convicted because God's spirit is perfect and it's holy and there's there's no, there's no way around it. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost or if you are consumed with demons, they will try to counteract those thoughts. Oh, okay, well, it's not going to hurt anybody. You know, I'm, I'm still a child of God. The Bible says everyone who sins is a slave to sin. This is why people carry these addictions and it's hard for them to stop doing things like masturbating, smoking, drinking, taking drugs, any of those things, because you're a slave to it now because you have subjected yourself and given it open access to you. You have given it willful access to your being to say, hey, okay, I'm okay with this. I'm accepting this in. I have invited this sin in. So now this sin is trying to take dominion over you because we have to remember that we are vessels. At the end of the day, we're either a vessel for God or you're a vessel for Satan. You can be oppressed with spirits and of course with fasting and prayer and deliverance, those things will come out. But a lot of us have given the enemy legal access to our vessels. So we need to come out of agreement and come out of a covenant with him. Once you come out of covenant with Satan, he no longer has dominion or legal access to your life. Once you come out of covenant and agreement with him and with sin and lawlessness, then can the Holy Spirit dwell within your being. Then will you start to see the transformation happen. Then Will you start to see that you are no longer walking in that old wineskin? Then you will see that you are now a new creation in Christ. And yes, it's a process. Everything is a process because there was a process of us, you know, in the world doing the things that we were doing and coming into Christ. Everything doesn't just leave. We have to work for this. And yes, salvation is not all about, okay, let me put in this work. Let me do works. It's not a work based salvation, but Having the Holy Spirit, you're going to do works because that is a fruit of having the Holy Ghost. It goes hand in hand. Just like a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, it goes hand in hand. John 16, it says the world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. Who is a ruler of this world? Satan. So if you are in the world and you're doing the things of the world and you're being a friend to the world, you're an enemy to God, meaning you will be judged. You will already be judged if you don't come out of agreement with him and all the things that he's doing in your life. Now, if you're still in the world and you haven't been introduced to the spirit of truth, to the spirit of the one and only true living God, which we all know about Jesus Christ. 
So there shouldn't be no excuse. But if you are not all the way subjected to Christ or you you still have things that you're going through, there's still going to be mercy gifted to you upon the one and only true living God. But at a time, you have to understand, once you start to come into truth and you accept him, so we need to know, like, we don't know when God will be like, okay, well, the grace that I've given to them has exceeded. Because God will try to reach you. There were so many times in my life where I could have died. You know, I could have been kidnapped or anything could have happened to me. But the Lord's mercy, the Lord's grace kept me. Why? Because he knew in the long run that I was going to be subjected to him and I was going to go hard for him. He knew that I'll be trying to snatch people out of the fire. He knew the calling that he had on my life. So he tarried with me for those years. He tarried over me and he gave me mercy. And yes, we are subjected to the law of the spiritual law, meaning if you're not subjected to Christ and you are living in the world, there's going to be repercussions to the things that you do. God may not always save you in if you're doing things that you have no business doing, but there will be a mercy. Maybe your life wasn't taken. Even the very last time, what, what made me surrender to Christ, I was driving under the influence, I had my children in the car. I was doing things I had no business doing. But his mercy and his grace kept me from dying and killing my children because we got abruptly stopped by the police with with um, tire strips and everything. But we didn't get hurt. Nobody was hurt. Nobody died. I still had to go to jail and serve that time. Now, did God cover me? Absolutely. Did it look like how I wanted it to? Oh, Lord, please get me out of this situation. Absolutely not. But in the long run. It, it did what it was supposed to do because me going to jail th that time, it made me surrender and bow down to the Lord and say, have it your way, Lord. I don't want to do this anymore on my own. So that the Lord used it for his good. He turned it around. But was it my ideal way? No. Now, yes. Now that I know what I know, that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Did it suck? Yeah. Just like dying to your flesh every day sucks. You have to think, is what I'm doing glorifying God? Because if it's not, it's in vain. It's a waste of time or you're doing it to please your flesh. We have to get out of the flesh so we can get into the spirit. So absolutely. And that time I hated it. I was mad. I wanted to get out. But it forced me to say, okay, I need to get my life together because I'm getting older and I'm a mother. And it wasn't even for that. I wanted to get close to God because he was planting seeds within me throughout my life through different people and different situations. But it just took a while for me. And it might be like that for some of you, but we have to come to a place to know that Jesus is real. This is real and this life is going to pass away. So what are you going to do? This is why the Bible says, choose today who you're going to serve. Either you're going to serve the world and you have to take the demise that the world is going and that's straight to hell. Or you can come into the truth of who the Lord is and really be fulfilled and set free because... Everything in this tangible life that we see, everything that we can see, touch, taste, and all of that, it's going to pass away. Are you dead inside? Are you using tangible things to fill those voids? Because only the Lord can fulfill you and sustain you and give you purpose. Nothing in the world can make you feel like you are complete. Been there, done that. Nothing can make you feel complete. No guy, no drugs, no alcohol, nothing. Being one with the one who created you. And I'm not talking about no new age spirituality. Being one with the Messiah is the only thing that will give you purpose. And a lot of people like to say God isn't that black and white. But he is. When it comes to sin and the commandments and certain things that he has said and declared through his word, he is black and white. You know, so... Hopefully this video will help you guys reevaluate yourself in your walk with Christ because, you know, there's there's coming a time and we don't know. We don't know when the Lord's going to say the cutoff is done. 
but we know that he is real and it is so and it will come to pass because everything that he declared in his word has came to pass is coming to pass and will come to pass he is not a man that he shall lie so you better get to know him i love y'all i pray that y'all have a good week get to know christ you need you know some advice some godly advice anything that you need you can always message me feel free i'm here i love you guys be blessed